Well, we're back at the Great Western Steam. We've actually never left. No. <laughs> you can't get away. This week, we're looking at Virginia and Truckee number one, the Lion. This is not the original engine, but is a recreation that's being built by Stan Gentry. Now, that's kind of over the top that somebody decides to build a one-to-one -one scale model of a locomotive. But there it is. That's a serious <laughs> model railroader right there. Now, just to, just to recap, the Virginia and Truckee, this little teeny 14-mile railroad that ran from Virginia City to Carson City has just been uh, a favorite of rail fans forever and ever and ever because it was just, uh, well, it was just an amazing looking railroad, a classic Old West Railroad. Oh, I love the look of that. It's just uh, a wonderful, wonderful thing. And not only has that locomotive been recreated, in fact, the entire 14-mile railroad has been recreated. That's fun. That's really fun. So this is the, uh, the recreation of the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. They've laid most of the track down to Carson City, relayed that, but they're currently not operating it. They're just operating the little short section from Virginia City down to Gold Hill. So after building the original 14 miles, the Virginia and Truckee added a line down to Reno, and this engine, number 11, was the first uh, locomotive to travel down that line, hence they gave it the name Reno. Oh, neat. And it's just, it's, it's going to be rebuilt by the Virginia and Truckee Railroad and operate again on the 14-mile track between Virginia City and Carson City. How cool is that? That's so cool, we've got to go back. Now, the very first two engines that ran on the railroad, the, the Lion and the Ormsby, were built by uh, the Booth Locomotive Works, which was actually the Union Iron Works in San Francisco. Right. So they weren't built by one of the major builders at all. And, well, apparently they didn't work super well. They were a very early design. And uh, in no time they were, they were scrapped out. Right. So... Back in the 1980s, Stan Gentry here decided he was going to rebuild the Lion. What? From the ground up. What? <laughs> and there it is, uh, so far at least. My name is Stan Gentry. I am from Clear Lake, Iowa. Uh, I built the uh, Virginian Truckee Lion replica starting in about 1989. I picked up a print at the California State Railroad Museum. I picked up five photographs at the Nevada State Railroad Museum, as well as the contract between the Union Iron Works and the Virginia and Truckee Railroad. I started doing drawings off of the line drawing I got from the California State Railroad Museum. The very first patterns we made were for the wheels. We cast the wheels, then we cast the cylinders. At the same time, we had the frame inch by 24 foot by 24 inch uh, steel one for each side and then the Strasburg Railroad proceeded to make the rods and uh, all the part of the undercarriage uh, the D valve uh, I had the uh, steam chest cast uh, some volunteers in California made the steam chest lids the volunteers also made the smoke box door, smoke box door ring, and the smoke stack. Uh, the boiler was welded by a cloaky construction in Elgin, Illinois. It was designed initially by Lynn Modinger at the Strasburg Railroad. Uh, the tender, the material came from uh, Rockford, uh, Illinois, and were, were pre-bent, cloaky construction, uh, welded and riveted the tender, the tender frame, wheels and trucks I personally made. The wheels came from the uh, Staver Foundry in Virginia, Minnesota. It's no longer in existence. And uh, some parts came from the Iron Foundry in Iron, Minnesota, no longer in existence. And uh, in a nutshell, that's pretty much uh, what we have on the Lion. In 2020, I donated the Lion to the uh, Nevada State Railroad Museum, and they are planning to continue uh, the building of it. They have been raising money. They have received a $10,000 uh, gift to, to replace these steel billets with springs. They have made the throttle valve in, in the meantime and they have proceeded to start to put the throttle together. 
The plan this weekend, July 4th, was to run it on air, but there were just too many projects too fast in the last three months that, that made that not possible. But it can run on air with a little bit of work today. Now, it's just such an amazing undertaking to get the idea to just build a locomotive. Uh, yeah, I, I can't even imagine. Uh, He's building it here in what appears to be a traction shop there in Iowa, a traction garage for a trolley or something. I'd like to know a little bit more about that. But for these decades, he's been slowly working on this locomotive and bringing that together. That's just, I, I, there are no words. There aren't words. This is just, uh, there was a movie once, I think, called The Magnificent Obsession. Yes. <laughs> This is a magnificent obsession. So I had to ask him the obvious question, why? Why in the world would somebody get the idea to build a locomotive? No, no real reason that I can put on tape. <laughs> let's, let's just call it an affliction. And uh, you're dealing with the guy that started building it, was 45 years old, a bit eclectic, a bit eccentric at that time. Uh, had a little bit of OCD and a little bit of ADHD. And the combination of the above makes you a very boring person in a conversation unless you want to talk about steam locomotives. But uh, they like to build things. So what we refer to that on our channel is the high art of screwing around. There you go. I would say you've nailed it. I have. It, it can cost you a lot. It can cost you family and, and uh, friends. <laughs> and lots of money. <laughs> and lots of money. Yeah. And understand if you were to build a steam locomotive today, I can't tell you how much it would cost. But in the uh, 1990s, it was kind of a guess that it would be $50 a pound. So do the math. 44,000 pounds is a lot of money. That's a lot of money. Of course, I ran into a guy who built a model railroad. First, he started by building a about 4,000 square foot building to put it in. Yep. And when I asked him what he'd spent, he said two. And I said, two million? And he said, no, too much. <laughs> Now, in walking around the locomotive, we noticed there are these plastic parts. Yeah, that wouldn't work. But it turns out that these are just test fits, uh, CNC uh, uh, parts that have been machined and, and test fitted to the locomotive. And speaking of recreating the Virginia and Truckee, back in the 1960s, George Richardson got the idea to model several of the locomotives from the Virginia and Truckee in one half inch scale. Oh, isn't that neat? Wow, the 1960s were a time when so many people were building models. That's about all we did, if I remember right. It was a, it was a national phenomenon. Oh, yes. I, I think probably about 20% of Americans were all building models of some kind or another. Right, that's how we spent our winter evenings. Yeah, absolutely. I built many a model back then. But Mr. Richardson built these out of metal. Right. And he got the idea that he wanted to make one example of each type of locomotive that was used on the Virginian Truckee, everybody's favorite little short line. And then once he completed that, it was like, well, okay, now I'll just start finishing out the whole roster. Well, yeah, I know that <laughs> feeling. You start on a model and away you go. You can't quit. So once he had one example of each type of engine, he just went on and started making everything. Right. And so he has two and three. He didn't finish the entire roster, but he was able to build a huge collection. This is number 25. And that's one of the locomotives that still exists on the Virginia and Truckee and is running here at the museum. Yes. And there it is. Yep, there it is. That's really cool. <laughs> and we've ridden this engine. It's just really cool. Mm -hmm. But he was able to model all three of the, the last engines that were bought by the Virginia and Truckee, these, these 10 wheelers, 25, 26, and 27. Uh, and 25 and 27 still exist, and there's 25 right there. Oh, that's so neat. Now this is number four, the Virginia. This is one of the locomotives that no longer exists. This is the James, really similar to the Bolker. Mm -hmm. And this is another engine that no longer exists, and there's the Reno. Oh, 
The number 11 that was the first train to go to Reno. And as we know, that locomotive still exists and has been purchased by the Virginian Truckee and is going to be restored to operating condition and run on the railroad again. Oh, neat. So I just love seeing the Reno. And <laughs> I love that cab. The whole locomotive, there's just classic lines mm -hmm. to the Reno. Yes. I just love that engine. Now here we have the Genoa, another one of the classic engines from the Virginia and Truckee, and it still exists. It's not operational, but it was here at the steam up. It had been brought up here by the California State Railroad Museum in Sacramento. Now this is the Empire, which also exists in the California State Railroad Museum, but they did not bring that up to the steam up. But that's a beautiful locomotive. The Ofer, this is one of the engines again that was unfortunately scrapped out and no longer exists, as is the Columbus, mm -hmm. another beautiful 440 that no longer exists, and the Dayton. Oh. Now there were two engines built by the Central Pacific, the Dayton being one of them, and it still exists. Oh wow. And it's here at the Nevada State Railroad Museum, but for the next couple of years apparently it's going to be loaned to the California State Railroad Museum. This is the Tahoe, this is another engine that still exists. But it's in Strasburg, mm, Pennsylvania. What's it doing out there? Boy, that thing got lost. Here's the Bulker. <laughs> now, the Bulker uh, is owned by the California State Railroad Museum, and they did bring it here. And for the foreseeable future, it's going to be here at the Nevada State Railroad oh, Museum. Oh, that's neat. This is the Inyo. Yes, one of my faves. This is probably everybody's favorite, just because not only does it survive, it still runs. Yes, isn't that neat? Isn't that neat? Ah. What a beautiful locomotive. And here again is the 26. That's the locomotive that burned up in the fire oh. and no longer exists. But the, the final engine on the Virginian Truckee, the 27, still exists and is up in Virginia City being restored and rebuilt to operate on the Virginian Truckee. And the McKean car. That's just, uh, that is so neat. Isn't that, it is the funnest thing to ride, and yeah. we know that because it still exists. Yes. <laughs> they weren't running it at the steam up. It was here inside the museum, but there it is. Yes, we have ridden it before. We have ridden it before. Number 22, the McKean car. And that pretty much rounds out the roster of the Virginian Truckee. Well, the big thing we wanted to look at this week was the lion. Right. Because that is really a big oh, thing. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm just <laughs> impressed. Anyway, if you haven't been over to the channel and you're not a subscriber or a member, pop on over to the channel. And the easy way to do that is with the blue button. Right there, the blue button. <laughs> well, we're not sure how you found this video on the internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. And we will see you here on Tuesday with some Tuesday foolishness. See you then. <laughs> see ya. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.